Hi there. Good morning. It is about 11.30, July 17th, 84 degrees Fahrenheit, 29 degrees Celsius, here in Sozopol. My room is just a five minute walk up that street right there. The clips that I showed at the beginning were actually filmed yesterday. The restaurant right down there, the beach up and over there, just a couple of minutes. I haven't been down this way yet. I think this is where there's another beach. So I'm going to uh, walk down here, show that. Walk past this shopping area. And in the process, read some history about Sozopol. So here we go from Wikipedia. The original name of the city is attested as Anthea in Greek, but was soon renamed to Apollonia. At various times, Apollonia was known as Apollonia Pontica, that is Apollonia on the Black Sea. Of course, the Black Sea is where we are, the Bulgarian Riviera. I can see a little bit of the sea right out there. By the first century AD, the name Sozopolis began to appear in written records. During the Ottoman rule, the town was known as Zezebolu, Zezeboli, or Zebolo. Sozopol is one of the oldest towns on Bulgarian Thrace's Black Sea coast. The first settlement on the site dates back to the Bronze Age. Undersea explorations in the region of the port reveal relics of dwellings, ceramic pottery, stone and bone tools from that era. Many anchors from the 2nd and 1st millennium BC have been discovered in the town's bay, a proof of active shipping since ancient times. The town was founded in the 7th century BC by Greek colonists from Miletus as Anthea. The town established itself as a trade and naval center in the following centuries and became one of the largest and richest Greek colonies in the Black Sea region. So there you go, an ancient Greek port town. So I've been here for uh, two nights. The room that you saw is where I stayed the past couple of nights. And then I wanted to stay another night tonight, but that room was uh, not available. And so they switched me to another room. So I moved out this morning and then we'll be uh, changing to another room when I uh, head back in a few hours or whatever. Nice uh, looking restaurant here. And so that is a phenomenal deal. $40 for a nice room. It's a small one there for one person. But to be on this sort of a, uh, speaking of Greek, Yeros, this kind of a just like full on tourist scene for $40, also really fast Wi Fi, like super fast. That is just crazy. So there is a. Uh, one of the big advantages of coming to the Bulgarian Riviera is you can have your classic beach paradise at a much, much more affordable rate than Spain, Italy, the French Riviera, of course, will be just like outrageously priced at this point. Now, this is the problem. This is not my kind of scene. We're like 10 levels of sunbeds. Crowds and crowds of people. Can't blame them. This is an ideal spot. Perfect sand. So the other beach is just right up and over around this uh, point here, 
and then the old town is that way as well and so i will walk over there it is really really nice exquisite old cobblestone paths classic old town fort wall etc so there is quite a bit to see packed into this uh small little town of course if you come at another time not in july or august then it will be much more quiet and peaceful and maybe even a little bit cheaper Good news. Sort of. There are still some sunbeds available. However, I am not at all interested in uh, laying out on a sunbed for hours. So I'm going to uh, keep the tour going and do a little relaxation and swimming a bit later. We'll see how much later because it is hot and instead uh, walk over to the other beach, show it really quick, and then check out the old town. So this seems to be kind of the end of the main tourist scene. And then here's that same street, turns into a pedestrian walking area, starting right there, heading back towards the uh, center of town and the other beach. And so I have a confession to make because I lied. Back in Sofia, when I recorded my video there, I said I wasn't going to go to the beach towns of Bulgaria. And yet, here I am. So I thought that I would really quick recapture my uh, trip so far in Bulgaria. I've lost track of how long I've been here. About two weeks, I guess. So I flew into Sofia, the capital city, which I totally recommend. It is a nice city for being a capital. It is very happening, but also quite relaxed and not like overwhelming as far as capital cities go with a fair amount to see. Very nice uh, pedestrian zone as well. A uh, big main square, parks, great restaurant choices and very, very affordable. Here's one of those strange uh, boxing things. Like you put in money, the uh, boxing bag drops down and then you punch it as hard as you can, I guess. And so from Sofia, then I went to Bansko in the Piran Mountains. Stayed there for five days. Really recommend it. Getting a mountain experience somewhere in Bulgaria. Gorgeous, gorgeous mountains, lakes, hiking, skiing in the winter, and all uh, snow activities. And then from there I rented a car and drove to the Rila Monastery and then the uh, Rila Seven Lakes, which were absolutely gorgeous. From there drove to Plovdiv, the second largest city of Bulgaria, dropped off the rental car, stayed there for several days, and then two days ago I caught a uh, train from Plovdiv direct to Burgas, which is just 35 minutes away from here, and then caught a bus from there over to Sozopol. So that is a great route to get a nice mix of city, mountains, lakes. The contrast between Sofia and Plovdiv, very different cities, but uh, both very much worth a visit. And then to get the beach uh, paradise experience here. So Bulgaria has definitely impressed me this time, my second time here, coming back in summer instead of winter. There's really a lot to see. Great uh, feeling, good food, friendly people, just all around nice and yet so much more affordable than many other places in the world. Some of the tours that are available 
from here, Istanbul by bus, in just two days, I guess there and back. So it is fairly close, Istanbul, Nesabar Sunny Beach. Pirate ship ride, it looks like, to Varna. Jeep safari, that looks very interesting. I think that that is outside of Varna, looks familiar from when I was there several years ago. Bulgarian village. So, this just changed my whole strategy for traveling tomorrow. Because I'm planning to leave and was going to go to the uh, northern beaches past Burgas. Sunny Beach, Nesabar. And I was assuming that I would end up taking a bus from here to Burgas and then another bus from Burgas continuing around the bay here, but boat just like straight across. So that is gonna be a much uh, better way to go. That office was not open. Today is a Sunday. It said open at 5 p.m. So I'll check uh, times and prices later today. So uh, let's get down to the other beach, show that, and then get into the old town. Here we are, back at the beginning. So there you can see the sign, New City of Sozopol to the left, and Burgas going that way. And then right here, we should be able to get a good view of the beach right down here. So because today is a Sunday, I'm sure that it is even more crowded than during the week. So there you go, another really nice bay, but also super packed. The restaurant where I ate yesterday for lunch is just uh, right, I think, yeah, straight across over there. And so you have this peninsula here, separating the two bays, and then the bay separating the two peninsulas, and that is the old town. Elvis Beach and Bar. Now does that mean that this is Elvis Beach? Or it's just called Elvis Beach and Bar Bar? Anyways, free beer. And then you have this uh, street that goes back behind the beach again with a restaurant, some good looking food here. All in Bulgarian, but uh, people here tend to speak English, especially at the restaurants. And then here you have the old wall. Let's take a look up here. Not sure what uh, this path goes to. Looks like, okay, yeah, I know where I am. So you have the old ruins here. As I mentioned at the beginning, a lot of history here. And then a church here, and right here is the main cobblestone road going into the peninsula of the old town. No cameras, it says. Also, I'm not exactly appropriately dressed now. And there is a bay down here that I haven't seen yet, so let's go take a look at that before I walk into the old town. As you can see, there is really quite a bit to see in this uh, very small town, but uh, it's packed with a lot of interesting sights and spots. Religious 
things next to Tattoo. Archaeological Museum of Sozopol, established in 1961, presents the history and the material culture of the most ancient town in the Bulgarian lands, Apollonia, Sozopol. It has a remarkable collection of ancient Greek vases, stone and lead anchors and stocks, antique and middle age amphoras. And so as I mentioned in the history at the beginning, the uh, ancient anchors, some of which are thousands of years old. Ticket office, fastferry.bg, round trip tour to Nesabar. I don't need the tour, I just need the transportation tomorrow. But it looks like this is the harbor where you would catch the boat over to the other side. Nesabar, sunny beach, Sveti Vlas. Cool looking boats here. So check that out. That is six dollars. Not exactly sure what that includes, but a sea boat trip. Okay, departure only in the evening. Interesting. And so I haven't been down here yet, and so I haven't walked along here. Now there is an interesting looking kind of older building. Hard to tell if you can get there from here, or probably it's open water there, and that is where the boats go through, or maybe it's just there. Anyways, I haven't walked along this walkway here yet, so let's uh, cruise along here and then come back into the old town this way. spot to have dinner if you want a more peaceful experience. I still can't tell if I'm going to be able to walk over there. It's looking like maybe I can. That uh, this connects up here. That looks very like late 19th century or probably early 20th century. A lot of restaurants in this town. Nice one there. I still can't quite tell if I'm going to be able to walk over there from here. Let's find out. There is a fence, it looks like. Stop. Blocked off there. Okay, not looking good. But at least uh, we can get a closer look. Oh wait, what's happening here? Oh, end. Well, I could actually quite easily get through that, but uh, let's not break the rules and get thrown in a Bulgarian prison for trespassing. There's no sign. I guess the barbed wire is sort of a sign. So yeah, what is that old building there? Like some sort of a governmental or mansion, hotel? Yeah, gotta be roughly around the turn of the 19th into the 20th century, something like that. Hundred and something years old, it looks like. So we have divers here. Let's take a look at what they're diving into. And there is actually a little beach here. Very little. And not so nice of water, but... Cute spot anyway. So are they uh, 
getting ready to dive in right here, probably. Little island there, and then Nessabar, Burgas, Svetivlas, all that, somewhere across there. And the tip of the peninsula. So I'm in the old town now. Where I'm staying is about a 15 minute walk away. You can see there are rooms here, guest rooms. And here is a very, very cute little chapel. And I am getting hungry for some lunch, so let's go find one of the touristy restaurants with the great view on the other side of the peninsula. Looking back at the beach, it is quite remarkable location. That tends to be the case with the remarkable views as they become touristy spots, but uh, for good reason. Okay, which way to go? Craft beer, that's a good sign. A good language lesson, how to say beer in six different languages. Okay, I recognize this spot, I was here the uh, first day that I arrived in the evening when it was more busy. Really nice with the uh, trees overhead. Almost has that Mediterranean feel a little bit with the uh, sounds of these cicadas. There is definitely a fusion of influence between the Mediterranean and the Black Sea because the Mediterranean is quite close and of course the history the uh, connection between the two. Restaurant in Cyrillic, Bulgarian. More good looking dishes. Looks like probably chicken. Some sort of a like dip. Onion rings. A cake or some dessert. Stuffed like peppers or something, vegetables with meat, steak, corn, pepper, maybe pork, sausage, oh yeah, looks yummy. More remains of the ancient city. Archaeological site, Northern Tower, with entrance to the fortress of Sozopol. Now, I assume that means entering, coming in this way. A section of the fortress wall of Sozopol with an entrance to the harbor, which was located between the islands of St. Ivan and St. Kirik and Yulita. What a spot for a restaurant there. And it looks like you can walk along over there and then get over to that point. Let's check that out. And parasailing. I guess that's what that one is.
I guess he can get over there, probably going up and over, around like that. Interesting door, tiny little space, and another door. Oh, actually, goes back a little bit to further there. Looks like kind of a pantry or something. And out there, the beaches. Classic old Eastern European car. Not sure what that is. Looks like an S. So I guess it isn't a lot. And here we have access to the walking. Lane along the sea, along the cliffs. One beach and then other beach over there. So, which restaurant to choose? Maybe I'll go a little further down that way. So nobody here, but when I walked through here in the evening, this was just packed. The ultimate evening dinner spot.